privilege and honor to have Robert Cabrera with the Keep Pauling Beautiful Commission to bring us an update. So, Robert, we hadn't heard from you for a while, but a while. Uh, I know you've been out there with your team working hard. Saving money. We're not spending it. So thank you for letting me come up here and speak. I'll try not to take more than an hour. <laughs> <clears throat> you laugh. Some of you know, though. <laughs> so what I want to talk about is what Keep Pauling Beautiful has been doing in the past uh, 2022 and what we're looking forward to doing next year. Um, we think we've made a pretty good impact on what, uh, what our job is and what we see things happening here in the county. Can you hear me? Um, so a little introduction real quick. Uh, the vision of Keep Pauling Beautiful is to create an atmosphere of cooperation and to lead by example. I think I'll put my glasses on. What do you think? KPB inspires and educates in order to show our neighbors that we live, play, and work in a community that is clean. We take pride in who we are and where we live. We, as a community, are better and stronger than we are as individuals. Our goal at KPB is to recognize and invite everyone, everyone to be part of the solution, not part of the problem. We want to lead the way to a better life for everyone in our community. So the numbers I'm about to show you, uh, these are our 2022 numbers through November, meaning that this does not include anything that we're doing here in December. For 2022, Keep America Beautiful, we did get the President's Circle Award again. Keep Georgia Beautiful Foundation, we received the Governor's Circle Award. For this year, we did 231 events. That's not including December. We'll probably add another 10 to that. Our volunteers for the year are 4,462. Our volunteer hours 18,929. These numbers are mind-boggling. I had to run them a couple of times just to make sure I wasn't making it up. The total benefits for the county, if we had to pay to have this done, $454,296. I know. That's scary, isn't it? The cost benefit, which would be a cost that we actually incurred to do, incurred? Is that the right word? That we, um, that was in place for us was 172.64. Now that is not an actual dollar amount we spent. That is based on an hourly rate uh, com in comparison between these two. So the difference was $282,232 that we saved the county and the citizens of Paulding County. Here's the real mind boggler. Actually, the next couple are. The participants for the year are 69,000. And two, I don't know who the two are, <laughs> 69,002. Those are folks who didn't volunteer but were part of what we were doing in some form. The U3 we reached this year, also a new record, 2,237. We did that through our Reduce, Reuse, Recycle program, STEM, and an Enviroscapes program. Our social media reach this year was, this is an estimate based on what uh, Social media is 10, that's 19,450. I'm pulling this up because it gives us a total number for the year, touch points for Keep Holding Beautiful of 95,151. Keeping, if you're keeping track, that's a little bit over half the population of Holding County. That's pretty incredible. Um, Move to the next one, because I'm going to talk about partnerships a little bit here, and what, uh, what this is, it gives you a list of the partners that we work with. Those that we do events with, we do programs with, on a regular basis, most of these are. I want to point a couple of them out. For example, the Pastors Alliance is meeting in Hiram at this point, and we're doing cleanups there on a monthly basis. Um, the 4-H extension, um, excuse me, the 4-H club, we are actually getting together with them and doing Enviroscapes. They're helping us to uh, go into schools and do enviroscapes on a regular basis. We're also going to have Tommy Leonard is going to lead training, and we're going to certify, at, I think, about six people to be part of our enviroscapes team. So that's coming up. Uh, we also this year, and it's not on the list, we actually teamed up with a lot of the high schools this year. We did a cleanup at one of the cemeteries at in, out in North Paulding where we had 60 cadets go to a cemetery and do a cleanup. With that was a historian from the church where the cemetery's at, and that historian explained the different aspects of what 
and how old the cemetery was going back into the early 1800s. Pretty cool. We had worked with 120 cadets out at Hiram High School to do a cleanup on the campus. These are the kind of things we do. This is the one I'm, this is probably one of the coolest things we've ever done. And that is that at the airport, I wave to those in the back. <coughs> at the airport, we had, we teamed up through Georgia Highlands College and Kennesaw State University with a group called Upward Bound. We took 60 plus students out there and spent the day cleaning. We spent the day planting. Of course, the airport doesn't do cleaning. It's absolutely fantastically beautiful. But we planted, we pulled weeds, and we put down mulch. And it was fantastic. It was a great day. Uh, they got to tour the museum. They got to go to the petting zoo, which really kind of tricked some of them because they thought we were going to have animals. <laughs> uh, and that was a big question. So next time, maybe we'll bring a cat or something out there. Um, so, but it was such a good program, and that's the second time we've worked with Upward Bound through Kennesaw State University to do this. So it was a good, really good program for us. Um, those are some of their insignias. So, I want to move on to 20, any questions about 2022? Comments? Great job. Thank you. Thank you. It was a huge team effort. Huge team effort. So. There's no way we could do those kind of numbers. Looking have, forward to some changes this coming year, too. So, Yes, sir. I honestly feel guilty because I hadn't been to one this year. I went to the airport last year. But do you have families that come out? Yes, sir, absolutely. do on a regular basis. Um, they come out with the uh, kids. and we, Of course, families with kids can't really get involved with anything on roadside cleanups, but I'll get into the roadside cleanups here in a minute. Um, so it's... Um, but they do come to libraries especially, because we do, we, you know, each one of the libraries, we try to do something annually there. Uh, we do something at the schools. Uh, we've just teamed up with the middle schools, if um, some of you probably know, or all of you know, is that we just, the middle schools have just gotten computers for our students. Uh, they've, we had a, we were contacted by one of our folks that we do stuff with on a regular basis from PB Rich. Uh, Kelly Nunn, and she actually got a hold of us and said, hey, we don't know what we're doing with this cardboard. So we teamed up with all the middle schools in the county, collecting the cardboard and taking it to the recycle center. If not, it would go into the trash. Cost us money instead of actually us getting paid for it. It's a recycle item instead of a, you know, a trash item at that point. So that, again, was just through positive uh, us contacting relationships, things like that. That's what, that's what we do. So looking forward to 2023, we're starting a new ambassadors program. Those are folks that have been in part of the Keep Pauling Beautiful board or commission as uh, in past years. Right now we have six, all six have signed on um, and will be a part of our programming next year. Their job basically is to represent us in the county. Uh, we are also signing on five new members to our commission. Uh, those we'll get into later uh, next year and so we can have them get started. Uh, but it's going to be, it's going to bring us to a total of 15, which will be our max on our commission. Um, then what we're going to do next year is going to be a little bit different. Um, we're, we're looking at the idea of giving each month a theme based on what happens that month. For example, the best one is, is February, which of course Arbor Day falls in February in Georgia. And so we're going to look at February and we're going to, all social media, all contact in the community is going to be about trees. It's going to be about Arbor Day. Uh, and we're going to do that for each one of our months. And th at that point, we're going to, each one's going to have its own agenda for what we're going to do in the way of social media, contacts, cleanups, programs are all going to be focused on that. But all those programs have to fall under four headings where you've, We've committed to do, do these as part of our mission, litter, recycle, education, relationship. It's got to fall into one of those four. If it doesn't, then we will look at not doing it. It's not going to be part of what we do. Uh, my wife pointed out last night, my beautiful, sweet, wonderful wife that you all know, uh, is that R-R-E-L, if I'd have just arranged it a little bit, well, it actually spells real in a way. So next year we're going to get real. One of the things I want to mention here is part of what we're going to be um, considering as we do our cleanups, as we look at programs, as we look at events, is that next year is going to be called the year of construction for obvious reasons. If you drive through the county for a minute, you see that we have construction going on. 
we've deemed basically that it's not really advantageous for us to go out and clean the side of a road where they're doing construction because it's not going to do any good. So we're going to focus other areas. These, these events, these programs that we're going to do are going to be more internal toward our, what we, you know, the, the facility here. We can do cleanups here. We can do uh, libraries, schools, those kind of things are going to be our main focus. Build those relationships through those events and programs. And that's what we plan to do. So we're looking forward to a really good year. These numbers are going to be hard to beat. Um, but I think we can do it. Uh, we're also looking at the possibility at some point we'll divide the county up a little bit and have one of the great things that's happened this year uh, is post four. We've got uh, some uh, uh, folks up there who are going to be part of our commission at some point. They are uh, doing cleanups on a weekly basis. I mean, we see them out there every week. They're contacting me on a weekly basis saying, hey, we picked up. Can you have this picked up by the DOT? And it is. So that's, up. that's what I've got. Any questions? I don't have another question, but I got a comment um, because, you know, all politicians and people running for office, we talk about commercialization and economic development. We'd like to balance out our residential with a lot more commercial. And that doesn't happen unless our county's clean and beautiful for people to come out and look at it, Robert. And maybe you sometimes even forget that. But, mm -hmm. you know, the, the big tax picture and revenue that can come in economically is a result of all of us pitching in as one big county team and keeping our county beautiful. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, as some of the things I think we can look at, um, just throwing it out here now, uh, is that we, the construction that we have going on is great. The county's growing. This is awesome. Uh, we're looking at this for the next year at least, two years probably, is to look at those areas and say how can we affect the construction company. I grew up in construction. So I know that every commercial job we ever did, 100% of the time, we had to clean up daily. If you're in a shopping center doing a commercial job, you have to clean up daily. So I look at this and say, what can we do to help this along for our construction companies? There are partners making this county grow, but what can we do to make that work a little better? How can we affect what they do? How can we affect the, the companies that we hire to cut our grass? We've seen this year that where they've cut and then picked up. So we have a day or two where litter's just everywhere because they've cut it. Now, I understand the process. I understand that it's easier for them to come behind and do that, but they leave it for a couple of days, and our county looks terrible because it's all part of, and, and, and a lot of these, I'll, I'll admit, they're state roads, the roads that, uh, that we have little control over this kind of thing other than helping with the contracts and those kind of things. The, I think the, the idea that they can go through ahead of time, pick up before they cut is probably would make a huge difference. Grass is this tall, they can't see it. So what do we do with that? I don't know. These are just kind of questions that I love throwing out. But most of all, I want to thank you for your support. This group always supports us, always helps. And whether you can be there or not, I know that you got my back. And that's huge. Does Steve Caker ever do anything when he comes out? He's probably napping right now. I haven't looked <laughs> back at this point, but he's probably asleep. <laughs> Somebody woke him up. Sorry. <laughs> he knew we'd get at least one shot in. So, okay. Yeah, anything else? Because uh, I just want to thank you, Robert. Personally, you guys do an awesome job. Thank you. Uh, something my dad used to tell me is you never get a second chance to make a first impression. You exactly. guys are the tip of the spear when it comes to keeping Paul and beautiful. And I want to thank you personally. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you for always, like I say, always supporting us. This, this team's always got our back, so we're part of the team. Thanks again, Robert. And if you haven't been on a cleanup, you should try it. Um, I've been on several, yes, and is. you'd be surprised of the things you might pick up. <laughs> well, and one of the things I want to mention, I think that uh, those who come out to do and help with cleanups, they find out it's really, it's not really about picking up trash. Uh, it's just, it's a lot of fun. We actually have a good time with it. So. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.